The big part is that I'm alive because I was really close. I had tumors in my breast and I also had multiple tumors in my liver. I'm a nurse, I knew what that meant. It turned out that my tumors were totally chemo resistant. There was nothing left for me. Basically they said, get your affairs in order and you don't need to make another appointment. <laughs> that was really hard. You don't need to make another appointment, but. 25 years ago, Virginia MP needed something that seemed impossible, a drug that could reverse her stage four metastatic breast cancer after all else had failed. Against the odds, that's exactly what these three scientists produced. The effort to get the drug to market was not really smooth sailing. There were preconceived notions that the approach wouldn't work. Because it was a lot like running up a steep hill, then getting to the top, completely exhausted. But then you can look out all around you and see what you've done. Their climb began 10 years before Virginia's diagnosis with Genentech molecular biologist Axel Ulrich. Ulrich found a gene, HER2, that makes a receptor that tells cells to grow and divide. The whole time he was working on understanding how growth factors work, he was also convinced that there must be a place for this in medicine. He was right. Enter oncologist Dennis Lehman. Together they found that extra copies of this gene appeared in 25% of breast cancers. This alteration is not inherited. It's something that's acquired. Women whose tumors contained it had a shorter disease-free survival and a shorter overall survival. They asked, can we treat this aggressive breast cancer by targeting HER2? So I think this was really the first example of doing something like that, that we're gonna actually try to identify what's broken in the tumor cells and target that specifically. Mike Shepard was on the trail. The Genentech team made an antibody that homed in on the HER2 receptor. And sure enough, it quashed growth of HER2 positive breast cancer cells. I knew I had something that worked. Uh, it took a while to convince other people. Genentech leadership was skeptical. No one had ever successfully treated cancer with an antibody. There was not a lot of enthusiasm about pursuing it. So we kept bugging. And in fact, at one point I got the moniker of Dennis the Menace. When every single experiment you do works, that means you're onto something good. And that's what happens here. So it was easy to believe, and it was easy to beat the drum, and it was easy to tell people, you're just not looking at this right. But there was one more scientific hurdle. They had a mouse antibody, but they needed to make a human version that the immune system would not attack. This is the first time anybody's ever made a fully humanized antibody. That's a big goal, pretty motivating. They were successful. The drug, Herceptin, went to clinical trials and patients had few side effects. It's, the treatment is very different than chemotherapy or radiation in the sense that it's safe. It doesn't affect normal cells that don't have the alteration. So it really is quite forgiving. Virginia heard about the drug from a lecture by Dr. Slayman. She got her tumors tested for her too, and they were positive. She lobbied to get into the trial. My daughter was pregnant, and I was going to have my first grandchild. And I, I really wanted to be a grandmother. <laughs> and I did well. Oh, you guys have to sing. Yeah, we have to sing. All right. I had what they called a complete response. Ready? Okay. Happy birthday to you. On Thursday, I'm going to be 75. <laughs> I got a cure, and I got to be old. Is it good to be old? Well, it beats the alternative. <laughs> every time. More than two million women have been treated with Herceptin since it was approved by the FDA.
For every real person you see that has Virginia's story, there's probably more than 10 or 20 people who didn't do that well. That's not good enough. So there's still a big challenge out there, and uh, I'm sure other people will pick it up.